um, welcome to the February community chat. Um, and uh, I'm I'm excited to kind of kick things off with uh, Alan uh, Levine here, who's going to be talking about uh, Open Education Week. But real quick, before we uh, dig dig into that and let let him introduce himself and everything. Um, I want to always take the opportunity to plug our own event schedule, so I'm going to do that shamelessly. Um, so, and they're all they're 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 all things people can you know uh, uh, may may find interesting. So, hopefully, um, this is of any value. Um, if you're unaware, we have a event calendar. It's at events.reclaimhosting.com. Um, this is the community chat today. We tend to do uh, a stream every single Friday uh, and we haven't missed many Fridays since we kind of made that commitment. So that's been cool. This uh, Friday, we're going to be talking about um, what we're going to be doing in an upcoming uh, OER conference. Uh, we've got a workshop next week that you may be interested in. You can uh, check that out if you're a Domain of One's Own administrator or WordPress multi-site administrator. I'd recommend you check it out. Uh, we've got details here and you can sign up. Um, roundups coming up at the end of the month. Uh, that'll, that'll be look for that in your inboxes. You can subscribe, um, uh, to get that in your inbox or RSS feed if you are not so email inclined. Uh, and, uh, February 23rd, we've got a kind of recap. We're going to be doing a sort of looking ahead, uh, at the future of Domain of One's Own and WordPress multi-site at Reclaim and kind of things we took away from the recent workshop. And um, even, even further, we're going to be on March 1st talking with uh, Anne-Marie Scott about using open source tools as key infrastructure on our Friday stream. So check all that out. You can look at our um, event calendar. You can subscribe to it. Do whatever you got to do. Um, so that's all upcoming. Um, but uh, th thanks, everyone, for joining. And um, I won't waste any more um, uh, of time with, with my blabbing. Um, so, uh, Alan, you want to introduce yourself really quick and, uh, really. get us started? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Now, now with all the people in this room here, I'm, I'm very uh, proud to be here among uh, old friends and, and new friends. Um, I'm a big friend of Reclaim. Um, I, I was like early into hippie hosting, and it's it's still like when I log into my my account in in my shortcut it says hippie I, I don't know why I find this um, I'm coming to you uh, from my my office at home here in Central Canada in Saskatchewan. Um, some people actually didn't realize that I left Arizona uh, in 2018 and, and moved here, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, my my current uh, day job, which technically I'm doing right now. Um, I work for Open Education Global, which is, I can give you the, the, the byline thing, but basically we just try to do as many things to keep people aware, interested in, um, in open education. And, and to me, in, in the broadest sense, uh, like I have like, you know, some people it's like, oh, it's open textbooks or it's like Creative Commons licenses. And, and to me, I, I just like the general, you know, openness that much of these things that we're here to talk about um, really come into play. And that's that's why I was really excited when um, Taylor sent the invite to come talk to Reclaim because, you know, so many things that the Reclaim services offer um, enable people to do these things and enable them to do things that, that don't lock them into, you know, the, the big nasty commercial packages that, that people have to labor under. Anyhow, Open Education Week uh, is this thing that my organization, I've been with them since I think I joined a month before the pandemic, um, which is another story, uh, but they've been around since 2012, um, really coming out of MIT's um, you know, first open courseware, which kind of got everybody interested in this idea of making open learning resources available to anybody who wanted to use them. And, you know, bless MIT, you know, they're, they're the big wheelhouse, but they really opened um, a lot of people's eyes to this potential. And so this organization came around um, in 2012, kind of focusing first on open courseware and kind of went broader as the years went by. And uh, I got an invite um, to come in and try to kickstart some community stuff, which means, um, I spray all these crazy ideas among my colleagues and they all nod their heads. And, and then you know, I don't know what happens. I, I tried doing some of them, but they, they let me get away with it. And so that's, what's happening. Uh, open education week. Uh, it's a great concept. And, you know, there's a lot of these that go on. There's open access week 
And it's just to say like, hey, during this one week, and it's not like, hey, we only do open education week, second week in March. No, of course, people engage in that all the time. But it's just a chance. And it is March 4th to 8th this year. Um, just to try to like have and engage people um, in doing as much that they're doing to promote locally wherever they work or wherever they are in the world um, about what they're doing. So the whole concept is it's an event that we don't organize. And we just say like, hey, everybody, run your own stuff and tell to us and we'll put it on this calendar. And, and I'll show you some of the stuff, how it works. But the whole idea is to say like um, during this week and just to say like for the world. Um, and thank you, Taylor, for getting my, my, my links in there. He's reading my mind, actually, as the URLs are streaming out of my, my brain and going to, to Taylor's guitar room there. Um, that we can just say, like, during this week that people are running. And initially, like, there were a lot of things that were, they're not always, some people think they're all online things. And so the whole idea is, like, do something locally, you know, do a workshop. And, you know, they used to have some of the um, campuses, you know, where had like students, you know, going around campus saying like, th these are why we think these open textbooks are valuable. So um, the thing that happens, whatever you want to run during open education week, it's up to you. We just ask you to sort of share it so we can, you know, put it on this big calendar and say, look at all the stuff that's going on. And so um, I'm, I'm hopefully that there'll be people in the reclaim community here that, that might be inclined to do so. I've already wrote Jim Luke and in, into doing some things and, and I'll talk about that, but that's the basic premise is to say like, you know, how many different things can we sort of like point to and say are going on during this week. And to be honest, like it doesn't have to be exactly in this week. So if you have something that's going on later in the month or a little bit before, we don't care. We're not, we're not hard. I almost said a dirty word. We're not going to be difficult <laughs> about monitoring that. So, um, and then uh, I'll get to showing some of the, these things uh, and we can talk about the, the event and the stuff that we're doing. We can talk about some of the, the under the hood things. I was um, say I'm already going off track, Taylor. You know, I, it's good that Taylor opened with the reclaim events. Cause I, I looked at it. It's like, Oh, that's the events calendar plugin. We're using that. And so I often start thinking. And so, um, and there's a whole backstory to that. Um, so the other thing that has always been done, and um, this is one of the things I'm trying to change is like every year they always had this call to say like, you know, share an open asset. So it's like, we ask people to sort of like share anything, you know, a project, a program, a resource, a workshop, a blog post, and, you know, they fill out a form and it goes into our database. And that's, always been the thing that we do with open education. We're great at like building these little like databases of things and, and it's a valuable and it's a sensible thing to do. I've done so many of these, I can't even enumerate them. Uh, but it, it occurred to me in thinking how um, to run the event this year, that why isn't that distributed? Why does, who cares if it's in our little database, you know? And so, I mean, there's a couple hundred old things in there. Most of the links are broken. Um, so, what I'm proposing this year, and I'll try to show you how I'm doing this, is to say like, okay, you have something that you've created that's openly licensed and shared. Um, put it in some other existing large or small or regionally appropriate repository. There's so many of them out there. Why do I have to keep creating one more? So we're saying like, you know, there's OER Commons, there's Molo, and then like, you know, there's state run ones. There, there's like ones that are institutional, like, I don't care where it is, but we just want to encourage as many people as we can to sort of just be adding to the collective world supply of this stuff. Um, and, and it all, you know, all this began because I started thinking like, where are the, um, the, like, where are the big like repositories? Like, I remember like, you know, I know the ones, you know, that are more North American related, but you know, there used to be one in India and, and, and I couldn't find it. And there was, so a lot of them kind of fizzled out over the years. And so even just trying to find these things, um, what happened was that um, as I started searching, what I ended up getting list was when I searched for OER repositories, I had all these lib guides and list of other repositories. And it, it just, it's like list of links all the way down. So, all right. Any questions? Am, am I babbling too much, Taylor? <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. 
someone tell me to stop. So, um, and please, uh, by all means, interrupt me um, because I'm going to uh, get away. So, um, of course, uh, th there's the website, and uh, Taylor's already put the the links in there. So um, we have, you know, it's 18 days away, and you know, I uh, we have, you know, there's a few things. There, there's a lot more. And my colleagues, I keep saying like, oh my God, we only have 50, we only have 60. And my colleagues keep saying they come in always at the end of February. They just like come in for an avalanche. So we're asking people uh, to contribute uh, these things. Where they go um, is not there, is uh, this version of the, um, of the calendar. And uh, honestly, I didn't want to do websites. Like I, I really, like I've, I'm not even good at it really anymore. So um, Tom is like, like, I, I just like, every time I see something that Tom Woodward does, it's like, oh my God, I got no skills anymore. So I, I do some stuff, but I really didn't want to do that work for OE Global, but it's just kind of slipped onto my lap to take it on. So um, I, I did have, I have someone working with me a little bit on some customizations um, to this um, event plugin. Uh, we wanted people to contribute events uh, to it. And, you know, I could show you how that works, but the biggest thing is that, you know, we have things coming in from around the world and I don't know about you, but anytime you deal with uh, events in different time zones, everything goes out the window. So the customization we have is that everything that's displayed here is in my time zone. All right. So I'm in central time zone and that's available up here on the bottom. So, you know, I can change this at any time. And if I want my time zone to be Yakutat, all the events uh, will be adjusted to uh, my local uh, time zone. I have nowhere idea where Yakutat is, um, but it looks pretty similar. So um, that is one thing that we wanted. And so there were a bunch of little things that had to go into um, adding uh, the thing. So the whole idea is if you actually want to go to add an event and you're not logged in, uh, it's going to ask you uh, to log in and I just don't have my generic one. So you're going to see me come in um, as an admin. I think um, we're seeing the wrong tab right now. We're seeing the <laughs> homepage tab. The, the ah, 2024 tab. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I thought Jitsi would follow me. Okay. See, that's my own ignorance. So thank you very much. I will just have to share my, I told you things would go bad. Uh, so, <laughs> no, uh, right. so I'll just, uh, share the whole, uh, freaking window of, um, and you're going to get the, uh, crypto effect there. So, um, so, um, now are, are you seeing different tabs fly by? Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. Back to the beginning. So, um, when I decide to add an event, um, it will ask me for a login. Um, if you don't have one, you'll be asked to create an account. And uh, basically, um, nice thing about uh, the event, I looked at so many plugins <laughs> um, that um, it kind of gives people a role where they never see the inside of WordPress. So more or less, we have the basic um, events uh, where um, it comes in. It detects your time zone. And if for some reason it's not that time zone, you can pick your time zone. And so that was the other thing that we needed was for people creating events is to be able to enter them in locally relevant time zones. And for anybody who deals, and, and I know the folks that reclaimed it, when you deal with like people around the world, it just like time gets very complicated. Uh, so basically, you know, we have a form to submit things. It, it goes into there and it ends up on the events calendar eventually. Um, what I liked with the events calendar is that you have these different filters that we could apply. So I could, so everything that just happens on the Mondays and I can just show everything that's in French on a Monday. We don't have any yet. Um, so nice filters. We didn't have that before, obviously search and tags and all kinds of ways to find the events. Um, the, the big thing that I like um, that we didn't have before um, is like uh, I can add this to my own calendar. And that that's pretty key for people to have things added to their own calendar. So there's a lot of things I, I really like that the events calendar has, and it, it pretty much has done what we wanted. Um, the other part that we wanted to have people do is this idea that I talked about of um, adding the assets. And so, what I've done for this one is, and 
I kind of went low end, <laughs> you know, yeah, Tom, I should have done gravity forms and done one of your crazy things, but um, more or less all we say is like um, share something somewhere and we have suggested places, but it doesn't matter. So if you shared it in somewhere else, like, you know, the, the Jim Groom arcade of crazy technology, you can put it there. It doesn't matter where. And so um, we're just collecting basically very simple information that you shared something um, in this new year. And it goes to the, you know, Google form. And I'm using this little, um, I've used it before a couple of times. It's called Awesome Table. And basically it creates a um, sort of a filterable uh, table uh, where I can just um, see things uh, that are within the same category. And I, and I really like the features for being able to narrow in on a lot of data. And so it's pretty simple and we're just getting started with all this, but uh, it was one of the things I wanted to change about Open Education Week. Uh, the other stuff, <laughs> if anybody's interested in adding is uh, on the homepage, we have we have all our graphics. And so um, we have a really talented graphic artist, Mario Badia, and he creates all these things. And so you can get your badges, you can create a flyer. Uh, there's background images. That's why I have green stuff around my hair. I don't usually do green screen, but I can show you that we've got these virtual backgrounds that people use. So that's, that's a little bit of a side effect. All right. Am I going too fast, Taylor? <laughs> You're doing good. <laughs> So like, okay, a lot of the stuff that comes in are obviously webinars, you know, that's what people like, you know, and they're good. I mean, webinars are great and you can bring in guest experts, you can showcase local people, webinars work really well. And, but I'm always trying to have people think about doing um, some things that are just like there are other things that you can do online that aren't always uh, webinars. So um, one of them um one of my favorites, uh, where did my tab go? Uh, that's been going on for like the last four years comes from um, the Delft uh, University of Technology or TU Delft. Um, and this is like one of my favorite activities they've done for like the past three years. They have a thing called We Like Sharing. And so they ask everybody from their community um, to share a photo matching the theme of what in the photo describes openness is usually their general prompt. Um, and they collect them, they, they put them onto a, um, a, a flicker, you know, pool. Um, and so, and people's, uh, photos, uh, get shared under the creative license that they choose. Probably, I think they use a Google form and it's really simple. Um, and so I, um, Bea de los Arcos, who runs it, um, every year I've been sort of working as I get to be a judge. They run it as a contest, but, uh, I really thought, um, that uh, this could be something that anybody could do. It's pretty simple. You just ask people to share some photos to a theme. Uh, you put them in a pool somewhere where they can see. So I, I put out there, and this is in our community space. Um, I sort of had a conversation with Bea back and forth and say like, well, what, what would it take for other people uh, to do this? So um, actually, you know, because I just have to do a demo. I set one up for um, our organization. Uh, we have someone in India who might be running one of these. And I just think like, this is an easy thing. This is replicable that other people can do and they can set this up and do it in this, in this way that they describe. So um, just for clarity, uh, this is something that's sort of my community building work. And this is again, something that Reclaim uses. I use a discourse community platform. Uh, mine's like a sprawling mess of stuff, but I think that's kind of interesting because that's what communities should be. So um, we have an area just for Open Education Week. So there's information about Open Education Week. Um, I sort of set up and asked people to say like, look, you can create an asynchronous activity. So I think this year I might be asking people to do daily creates or something like that. And so just try to stir up some things within this community space um, that people do. Uh, one of the other things uh, that I do is uh, I, I do a podcast for our organization. And during Open Education Week, this is from last year, I, I set them up during the week and uh, we put out a call there. If people want to 
you know, be in the podcast studio as we're recording. And sometimes they just like to listen, but sometimes they want to participate in the discussions. And so I do these like live sort of live ish studio recording sessions and people can be there for, you know, um, and we try to, you know, we generally go for some high profile ones. This was one last year. It was just fascinating um, for uh, some librarians from the Ukraine state university who talked basically about how they were able to offer services um, as uh, their country was being bombed and is still being bombed. And so an incredible story and just a privilege to be there. And then I'm just going so fast. I'll just keep going. Um, the other thing that I did last year as an experiment is uh, like, I think do you guys still use StreamYard. Yep. We do. It yeah. Claim, yeah. Yeah. So I was inspired by that. I started using StreamYard to me. Like I like doing these live informal events. Um, what's great about doing that is like, it gets, you know, it gets recorded already to YouTube. I don't have to edit anything. And um, the live event is like, well, it's lively. And so I set up a whole schedule of these. I think I did 14 last year and um, some were topical, but a lot of them were just inviting like people of various interest um, who just were willing to come on and talk a little bit about a project they were doing or some work or just engage uh, in open conversations. And so um, we, we had, um, these were really uh a lot of uh, fun and they were kind of exciting to do. We had two in Spanish and one in Portuguese. Um, uh, Marin Depo was there last year. We had some people from the UK. So I'm going to do these again. I'll be um, putting out a um, form for anybody. Basically it's, you want to drop in. And so I'm trying to um, convince uh, Jim that he should bring Dr. Oblivion on. And I would love to have anybody um, who's in the reclaim community uh, be part of this or to consider um, doing something uh, in March as part of the uh, Open Education Week extravaganza. Um, and, oh, I forgot to show <laughs> this one thing that, that you can do. Um, and, of course, like I feel like, um, you know, here it is again that um, we're just um, copying stuff that um, – that Reclaim does. Uh, yeah, Brian Mathers, of course, the brilliant Brian Mathers has uh, the fabulous remixer machine. So I recycle this one all the time. It's, it's a digital postcard and, um, you know, we create one and you can change the image and the stamp and the you can edit all, all the things on here. So we ask people just to sort of, because um, I'm always interested in, in seeing where people are in the world. So um, the prompt this year is to, uh, show something um, that uh, demonstrates uh, where you are in the world. So, of course, um, I have to respond to my own prompts. So um, I've got uh, my, my open space here on the prairies. And look, <laughs> uh, Teresa McKinnon responded. And so um, she's advertising for one of her events. So uh, this is a real simple and small thing to do. But um, these are the things I love doing the most are just these kind of goofy small little activities um you know um, and i know i'm curious to hear jason how a splot thing went for his workshop i'm always trying to get people to put things in my, my little splots and um and i just think there are lots of um small things that we can invite people to be part of um that aren't as onerous as trying to figure out how do i publish an open textbook or you know where am i going to put my course this year um, so open education week, March 4th to March 8th. Um, I hope folks here, uh, will spread it around the places that they work. Um, you don't even have to do stuff, just go there and participate in things as well. Um, and, you know, blast it out on social media. Um, you know, we have stuff going out in all the channels. Um, I mostly look at Mastodon. I don't look at the place that much, but, um, you have to know that people are everywhere these days, which actually is an interesting conversation to hear how others are dealing um, with that. <laughs> and uh, now I might draw a breath. Well, I'll tell you, Alan, one of the things I'm super interested in um, is, and I, always you've blogged it extensively. So I should, I could just read the blog you could say, but like how you've used discourse versus discord 
for community to keep it open and to keep it accessible is a really interesting, like that would be a really interesting discussion around your thinking. And I was impressed when, you know, when you started working with OE Global and you'd made that decision and you blogged extensively how you did it. How is that working out for you? And what is that? Because a lot of this is actually housed there, right? I mean, you know, a lot of this stuff is ultimately going to discourse. Yeah. And honestly, I haven't been too strategic in the way I, I've I've created way too many categories. And um, I'm not as deft. Like, uh, there's really good people who are good at, at theming it. But I don't think that matters as much, what it looks like. So um, mostly... Honestly, I make a lot of, I spend a lot of time making noise there um, and trying to encourage other people. Um, honestly, I love it. And at the same time, it's a confusing <laughs> environment to many people. They get lost there. Um, so uh, there's that. But Discourse does a lot of things um, to sort of nudge you along and notifications are good. Uh, so what helped in the beginning, obviously, you know, usually what helps is like, a lot of these things you can set up and say, like, yes, it's going to be a great idea. I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to tell everybody and people are going to like check it out and they'll, they'll get engaged. And, and then you sit back for a while and they're like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. So if you have it built around something. So what happened was, you know, that first year when I just set it up as an experiment, you know, we had to do the, the pivot. So our, our in-person conference was canceled, you know, for two years. So people, we decided to sort of host uh, a lot of the, well, basically the whole, the whole event uh, was basically in uh, discourse. So a lot of people ended up signing up to create accounts for a reason um, that's been happening. And so sometimes, you know, I find that when you want to set up these places, like, yeah, there'll be some traction on what happens on its own. Um, but also like if you can weave it into something that people will need to sign up or want to sign up to be doing something specific. So that's kind of helped. Um, some things I've tried just really haven't gone anywhere and that happens. And so um, I do some things. I, um, I sort of like, as I'm seeing like interesting websites and tools that I think would worth be sharing. Um, a lot of them come from Tom and his list. Um, I, <laughs> this is my duct tape. I, I bookmark them in Pinboard. And I have something, an RSS feed from, for a category that blips them out to Mastodon and also posts them in um, our discourse. And for that one, I had to use Zapier. I, I don't know much about Zapier, but I found it can talk to discourse. IFTT can't. So I, I've been playing around with a couple of those little like um, bridging services. And um, there's a new one I found out. It's make.com. And it kind of blows the doors off of IFTT. Yeah, it's edgy glue. Um, it's almost like Yahoo Pipes in a way. Um, and it's really, um, I've done a couple, I've moved from IFTT because they keep changing the terms. Like <laughs> I did this thing I found, you can um, post to um, Mastodon from an RSS feed um, and you have to go through these little bit of uh, steps um, as uh, to get to create a web hook, as they call it, to post the Mastodon. And one of mine stopped working. And I just realized they changed the terms. So, you know, first of all, you used to be able to do four um, for free. And then I think because of Twitter's, the way they, you know, torpedoed their API for IFTT, I don't know, if to offer it as a service, they had to make it a pay for things. So they've been chipping away at the free things. Um, and so, you know, and that happens with all of them. This make.com, you know, it, there is a limited free service, but for the stuff I'm doing once per day, I think I can slide under the hood. And besides that, I just create multiple accounts. You know, I have, you know, thanks to my reclaim hosting, you know, setup, I have multiple, I have like 50 aliases for my, <laughs> my main mail account. So I use them all the time. Um, but um, I, I still like those kind of, you know, little things to hook one website service to another. Um, and, and I think because, you know, Mastodon, you know, I, I actually quite love it. And like, I don't really want to bother anywhere else, but like, there's not going to be that single place anymore. 
Um, I, I've accepted that. And that's okay. Like, actually, I think the fact that we feel like Twitter was, was an illusion. It never, it never really was, but it felt like it. Um, but those are the old days. They're gone. Um, and so now, you know, we're, we're all over the place and actually that's okay. Yeah. Look at that. N eight N. Yeah. And so, um, a lot of times you find, you know, there are many multiple services to do these things. Um, You'll find if, if you're willing to sort of, you know, scrape your knuckles and do, you know, I love it. You find these things, you can host your own and you go to GitHub and it's like the instructions are like, you know, install this package and NPM this. And I'm like, I'm out of here. Um, but some of the stuff is, is doable. Um, and so, you know, my, my, I'm going off on tangents here, Jim, like my latest gripe is, is, I mean, the web is like, we know a great doc. Cory Doctor says it's enshittified. Like you can't go to a web link hardly anymore and read anything without scraping away, you know, subscription dot boxes and ads and 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 except if you're going to someone's blog or self-hosted site. <laughs> like, you know, so why can people do that stuff and and not necessarily? So um you know, there, there are, you know, in Mastodon, you know, there is no algorithm. Like I get things in the order that I want from people that I want. And I like that. And so I, I don't necessarily want to subject, um, but we always have this trade off of um, how easy it is and people's reluctance. And so, uh, you know, and honestly, yeah, Mastodon is bewildering. Like I still don't know what it does. Like I, I really am not confident that I've really sent a private message to anyone because <laughs> it looks like a public message. And I'm, I send one. I'm like, did I really say that in public? <laughs> yeah. I can't. Can you imagine designing the feature of we need private messaging in Mastodon? They're like, cool. What we'll do is we'll make it a message and mark it so that only the two, you know, the two people involved can see it, but we'll put it right in the middle of your public timeline. That's good. Right. Yeah. That's how that yeah. should work. <laughs> yeah. And try to find anything like, you know, if, you know, if, if I don't bookmark something, you know, it, it's gone like in flyby. And, and now I'm thinking like, well, how the heck am I going to search my bookmarks? So I have to like download them and search. So, um, but I don't know, in a way I kind of like messy things, but again, I'm not most people. And, um, you know, the things that <laughs> we ask people or hope people are willing to take on um, in addition to, you know, being at work where they're like, you know, well, you have to use this platform or you have to use this kind of learning system and then figure out like how, what are the other things I'm going to use for my own um, connection building, the old, you know, personal learning network. If those are still the acronym of the day, um, it's just, it's a load of stuff. And, you know, I, I was going to say in the beginning when Taylor said, like, oh, we get an RSS feed, I'm like, you know, what's RSS? You know, <laughs> it's the technology that, of course, has, you know, been dead a thousand times, um, but like works for me every day. And uh, I, you know, un until that doesn't happen, um, I'm not getting off that soapbox. Oh. Um, yeah, I've I've recently taken the attitude of just um I just keep talking about RSS and I assume everyone's using it. I know that not everyone's <laughs> using it, but but I just keep every time I mention a newsletter or email, I'm like or RSS, and I that's what I'm just gonna do from now on because uh, I, I and not everyone needs to like it, but um but uh, I, I people people declare it dead, and I'm like I think people think it's dead because it's not visible when I use it, right? Like you don't. You don't know what that I'm, you know, if if you're if I'm reading your site on RSS, it's kind of hard to to know. So, yeah, yeah, and, and you don't see ads like usually. Um, hey, hey, Tim, we're getting a lot of keyboard noise uh, right now. Sorry. Uh, the other speaking of this, and this is wild. I I trying to remember where I came across this because. You're not supposed to share the link for this. And I saw it in someone's um, like button down or whatever, whatever newsletter it was. Um, it's kind of funny. Jim will appreciate it. It's called RSS Club. And, you know, the first rule is, of course, you know, and I'm breaking the rule, but I'm not in public. Uh, but get this. What they're doing is people are 
if I get it right, it's just RS. They're writing in just RSS feeds, but the site is not public. I don't know how people are doing this, but it's basically all you can do is like download the RSS feeds into your reader um, and read them. And so, but there is no on the web and it's just wacky. And um, I, I'll send the link privately, but I'm not supposed to talk about it. But, you know, those are the things, you know, which, you know, I don't know about you, but like, I kind of find those things. And I know Tom does. And I know every a lot of people who do like those quirky things that people are doing, um, you know, either, in you know, GitHub or these little like standalone sites um, that um, just kind of say like people are still out there cooking up these crazy independent things on their own. Um, they're just lost in the wash of everything that most people are looking at. Um, so that's kind of what, you know, warms my heart when it just seems like everything's going to crap. <laughs> I uh, related to that. I, I've been fascinated recently with, um, if with a, a new, web alternative protocol called Gemini and it's an extension of gopher. <laughs> I, I, I came across that. I, I couldn't make heads or tails of it, but I, I love yeah, it. Yeah. I don't really, I, I don't, I, I don't say I get it yet, but I I'm, I'm like, okay, well I'm going to keep this bookmarked and yeah, it's fascinating. And now I'm kind of like, it, it's, it's mostly just like a, a kind of pushback on the type of thing you're talking about of like, you know, sometimes the experience of the modern web is not great. The problem I have with that is like, okay, but like we're complaining about these big, like loaded up corporate websites. Typically we're not usually seeing that kind of thing on blogs, which is, I mean, though, you know, Google's not going to make a Gemini website soon, right. <laughs> or a website on that protocol or whatever. But, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's cool to see that technology get, pushed from an independent place you know yeah and there is i remember there is some like um gopher emulator through the web i, I can't remember what it was that and it has another you know it's got a um another gopher mascot or something and and um i, I can't remember but um yeah D that's it tom dave rupert that's where i saw the rss club um and um yeah a lot of these things like who's gonna like you know, your average person who's going to figure out this Gemini thing. But again, like the fact that people are spinning out these ideas and whether they stick or not doesn't matter, but it's, it's the, um, it's the refreshing from, you know, the blandness of, you know, chat GPT output. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so you know one of the one of the things that um, I'm kind of curious about with um, and you did you did share some some examples um, of kind of non webinar uh, type uh, content. I, I mean, is there any is there any other kind of weird stuff that you're seeing people try for Open Education Week, or maybe things you'd like to see people try? <laughs> uh, well, you know. There are some of the, you know, there's a lot of, the, you know, the lightning talks is, is actually a pretty good format. Um, I, I'm trying to, um, I'm working with um, uh, Catherine Cronin and Laura Chernowitz. You know, they had this higher ed for good, you know, book came out, which was a fantastic project. And um, I love it. And Jim's in it. Right. And so, you know, of course, they've been like more or less, you know, they have to do this. Like, you know, people are talking about it and, you know, you'll go on a webinar and like, you know, you'll, you'll sort of like feel the goodness of how good the project is. And so um, I've approached them and, and they've taken on is to have like convene more, more like a, a real, and I don't even know how to run a book discussion group, but I said I would try to do it, but um, I, I'm, you know, we want people to read Jim's chapter or at least skim it the first time and come in with some like you know, print out on paper and highlight it with their yellow pen, or actually I, my dream is they would do it in hypothesis. And, and, and like, um, I was inspired by, um, uh, the mystery hype, uh, 3000 podcast, um, with Emily Bender and sort of like they, they do the, the criticism of these, like, you know, AI papers that are just full of BS and they basically, go through the paper and they, they pull up pictures or they say like, look at figure one, this is a meaningless figure. And so 
I don't want to criticize Jim's work like that, but like, what if you had people who had at least, you know, looked at what Jim wrote about the commons and came in and said like, well, let's talk about it. And what do you think the commons is? And and, Jim, can you explain, you know, the economic theory here? And, you know, that's what I dream for, for some events. And um, I think there, there are some, I I do like um, one active group is uh, from the state of Oregon, um, open Oregon resources um, and um, brilliant um, Amy Hoffer who runs a lot of their activities. Um, So they just submitted um, a series of them and I can dig out the link because tribe events lets me do that. I can pull out a link for all the ones done by one organization. Um, that they, of course, they have some webinars going on, but um, they have, um, uh, they have, they're doing one, um, and I tried this once too. Is they're they're having a keynote rewatch party, so they're gonna get people together in like a Zoom, and they're gonna watch um, Rajiv Jangyangi's keynote uh, from the Open Ed Conference, and they could, they'll talk about it while they're watching it. So, you know, a movie rewatch party. Why, why not do um, a webinar rewatch party? Well. I don't know. I never rewatch webinars anyhow myself that much, uh, but um, that's that's like a different idea. And they also have at the end of the week, um, they're asking some of their faculty who have authored um, OERs within the state of Oregon to come on as, as sort of like a happy hour thing and just to do a reading, like a short reading from their book and sort of like having someone read out loud the work that they've published as an OER in a group environment, like that's kind of different. I I like that. So, um, you know, there are things that, that that people do. Um, you know, there are people that are doing more like, um, trying to do like online workshoppy stuff. So there's some people doing some H5P stuff that instead of like showing you how great H5P is like sit along with me and, and do it as, as we, as we go. So I think those sessions are good where people can actually do something hands on, um, which as many times as I tried it and believe it can do, it's so hard to do over the screen thing because you can't see what people are doing. And, um, and so, um, but doing it at the same time or giving people um, the ability to sort of go back and, and do it. And, and then, um, you know, I, I do try to get people to sort of like set these things up in something like, you know, discourse to sort of like continue the conversations. Um, it happens a small amount of time. But the thing I found Taylor, like, or or Jim going back to discourse is like, I think like I post all this stuff and people don't like a few people reply, but some, and sometimes other people post things and the conversations take off and you can't really say why. Um, But I find that people say privately that they read more than they reply. And so I, I think you have to sort of take that, 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 um, that people are engaging with it and not everybody really um, sort of wants to sort of like jump in because what happens is in discourse, a lot of times the rooms get dominated by people who write a lot. Um, and and sure. that isn't, inti- that's still intimidating for a lot of people. And, um, you know, I try to keep that in mind, um, which is why mainly I just try to be a goofball and, and have things with typos and, you know, pictures of my dog um, just to not be serious all the time. It's interesting to hear, like, um, so la- last last week, uh, Friday, we did a stream um, with uh, Martin Hoxie on building community, and this oh. very same thing came up of, um, and of like, we we even with the stuff we're doing here at Reclaim with our little you know informal streams and community chats and things like that is will um or or stuff in discord as we will hear from folks in whatever venue sometimes in tickets like sometimes i'll help someone with like a permissions issue and they'll say thanks also saw that thing last week thank you for that too and, uh-huh. and you know it'll come from anywhere and it to me it, it's um it's it kind of reinforces that thing you just said and i i i'm like that myself like so much of this stuff i read you know and and I'll I don't I don't comment on say all of you know your blog posts for instance because what I would say is like that's cool thanks and it's like okay well that's not really worth saying I guess um, so and I I think there are a lot of people like that right that hurt yeah. just like yeah I appreciate this is out there um, and maybe I don't have anything to specifically add at this moment and that's 
you know, we're even kind of taught not to to do that, right? Like in <laughs> in college, right? I wouldn't have like uh, in a in a classroom context raised my hand and been like, "Yep," <laughs> you know. So um, I think uh, I don't know. I guess to me, it just reinforces the idea that like doing this stuff in different venues and mediums and whatever that means. It's text. It's a forum. It's Discord or some something like that. That's a little bit shorter form. Or maybe it's video. I, I think it. I think it's important because it lets people kind of uh, engage where they're comfortable. Yeah, and well, first of all, I can't believe I missed something with Martin Hoxie. I haven't talked. I missed that. He's got guy a recording so up, much. So <laughs> <laughs> he's got. A, well, me and webinars, but uh, first of all, Martin is one of the most brilliant and also kind and generous people in, in this field. So shout outs to Martin. And uh, yeah, like, like I agree with what you're saying, Taylor. It's like, we always have this think that, um, thanks pilot, uh, that um, we can get it under one hood. And like, that's not how the internet operates either. Like it, it is all over the place and we are all over the place. And so I just, you know, I, I reply, you know, I rely on, you know, other people informing me and most of the things that I turn around and share, I don't find them. They, they come from somebody else. And, um, you know, and I'm okay with that. But like, I think what also you're saying, Taylor, is important is that people can choose where and how they want to participate. And um, the, the thing with the blogging is like, every time I get caught up in sort of the thing like you know oh that was a great post why didn't anybody comment where's my where's my readers i need to do a newsletter i can shove it in their email boxes <laughs> that's my other rant is why is everybody going to email newsletters instead of just putting it out there um and that's not the reason i write and so you have to say like am i writing to to share to say something or do i need to get feedback to be validated or or um you know that sort of thing and you know and that's an ego thing. Like, believe me, like I feel better when I get a comment from someone, um, but we can't be tied to that. And, and I think there's a bit of a, like a performance <laughs> layer going on out there, which, which kind of bothers me. And that's um, not new, right? Like, like that's, that's a thing since, since blogging and, you know, it's something you hear people say some version of that related to social media, related to uh, YouTube videos or Instagram, like doesn't matter what it is. And it's like, that's not new. Like we're, we're humans. We, we do seek that validation. I don't think we have to be ashamed of that, but it is important to think of, yeah. What, what is the purpose? Like, right. Like, uh, um, you know, Jim, Jim always says like, we're getting, you know, blog, like no one's reading. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> I think that's, that's important. The part of the reason we do um, some of the stuff here at reclaim is simply because we want to do it or it's helpful for us to document that um, in some way um, and hope maybe people find it useful. <laughs> so, and it's, it's hard for people to understand that and, and you, you know, you can't help them understand it by telling it, they have to get some experience. And so, you know, that's, that's what I, I try to do um, to let people experience that. But I was just thinking, I, this goes back even to um, when, Oh, Here's old man internet coming. Um, in the day when I started, like the place we hung out with, with email listservs and I was learning Macromedia director date myself. And I joined the direct L listserv. And um, there was this guy from Virginia tech, uh, G Gordon Lee. Like he answered everything. He knew everything. And finally I got the nerve to sort of share something I was doing and ask a question and he cut me to pieces. <laughs> he, he told me how stupid my idea was. And um, I I didn't post again for six months, um, you know, and um, that still goes on. Um, and, and like, you know, and I, I try to keep a lot of that in, in mind, um, <laughs> the listeners, you know, and honestly, like, there's some great listeners out there. And, and, and you know, it's not the platform or that, that tool. It's what we do in them that matters. And, um, and again, the whole thing, you know, that, you know, again, I'll, I'll do, I'll do my, my sales talk, but, you know, reclaim gives you the potential to do anything. Like it can be, it, you know, and, and, you know, sure people mostly get on and they create a WordPress blog, but people getting in there and they tinker with stuff or they, 
they they you know actually <laughs> poke around the the control panel and C panel and um, I think like it's a lot to give people at least that potential um, you know and it's it's the water and you get them there um, and, and they at least have um, that freedom uh, to try something and, and fail quietly or just um, or just share it and um, you know just thank you so much for, for keeping that going because there's not as many spaces left where people can do that. Like most people, they want to sign up, you know, with something and create an account and, and have them, you know, manage everything for them. There's my and sales that, pitch. And those are the mother truckers who keep us up at night. Those people <laughs> who are playing around experimenting. <laughs> They're the ones where we don't sleep. We come in with our early morning, like, uh Oh, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you, Alan, for that. <laughs> so, thank, thanks for letting me blab uh, everybody, Taylor and Pilot and Amanda and the crew there. Um, just, you know, the, the the stuff that you guys do, it, just if, if you don't get enough uh, of the positives um, that, you know, I, I just wish more people, you know, and, and I don't know for like, you know, Tom and, and Jim and others like and Tim, like, is it uphill now to convince people um, to take this on? Um because you know now people pay people like oh my god wordpress like the block editor i'm pointing at you jim like <laughs> it's like it, it is more complicated um and um you well, know and it, it's you know it's something that uh like um uh a man and i have been actually talking a lot about recently of like it it may be in some senses it can be uphill to convince people to take this work on, but in some senses we've got a lot of really good recent examples of why it's important mm. to to be thinking, considering open tools, open infrastructure, where that fits in, right? Like because because it's it's not. I mean, it never was hypothetical. To be clear, none of this is new, but but most people know about what's happening with Twitter. Most people know about what's happening with name a service, right? And and so I think it's almost in some ways easier than ever to say like why would you why would you tie your fate <laughs> or the fate of your project to one company or one person or whatever? Uh why would you do that? It just doesn't make sense. Um and yeah, it's not an easy thing to do most of the time. Um, and you do have to make compromises sometimes in terms of like, well, you know, this may cost more in the short term, probably not in the long term, but in the short term, you know, um, so it's, it's not, it's, and it definitely requires sitting down and thinking through and, and sometimes mapping it out, right. Even just looking at what your alternatives are. But, um, I think in some ways it's easier to make that, that argument than ever. So, Thanks, Twitter, for that. <laughs> um, just <clears throat> adding adding to that um, side of it, the other thing that I say to students who sometimes look at me and ask, you know, why do this extra um, thing? And I, I think of Ed Beck, for instance, I, and I'll tell them, you know, WordPress in particular, but many of the things, nearly all of the things in a, the cPanel, you know, there's a community of people that you can approach and that you can um, voice your opinion. And on the accessibility side for WordPress, you know, we have someone um, that we that we know who is very involved in that process and is participating with those developers to try and make things better. Try doing that with Facebook or Instagram or, or a platform like that, you know, and I show them in the user interface of WordPress, the history, it tells its own story. You know, posts are first, media is second. After people had seen its potential, not as a blog, but as a website, pages are next. It shows the evolution and the, and the input of the community um, every step of the way in the software. And you're just not going to get that from any other platform. And yeah, I think I'm also confirming all of the uh, uh, age stereotypes today by having my microphone up and typing. Up <laughs> so we I can apologize. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I apologize for all of that. But anyway, that's what I say is like, yeah, it's, it's maybe not as frictionless as some of the other things that you've encountered, but the upside of that is it's built 
exactly the way the members of the community want it to be. And you can be a member of that community yourself. Well, your your mic is perfect, Tim, and it's it's great to see you and hear you. Yeah, I miss you. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're we're just about time, and honestly, that was a that was a really nice uh, sentiment to end on. But um, I, I think um, I think I'm going to stop the recording in a second here. But I'll I'll be hanging out for a few minutes, and and as people trickle out, and yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Yeah.